Well, hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. It's Lisa Turner here from Psychademy Leaders in Evolution of Spiritual Leadership. So today I'm going to talk to you about one of the most common questions I get asked, which is, what's my life's purpose? How do I find my life's purpose? But before I do that, I'm going to show you something very exciting. I've just got some new wool. So it's lovely, fluffy white wool, and I'm going to make this jumper for my daughter's friend. Now, I don't know if you can see that. So that's rather a nice jersey, isn't it? So I thought you'd like to know that. And Flavia, if you're watching, this is your wool. Okay. It's nice and soft. Okay, so now I've got that very important piece out of the way. Uh, yes, I do love to knit. And I've got to finish another jumper first, but I'm, I should do it this weekend. We're on to the neck shaping. So first of all, knitting is not my life's purpose. <laughs> but I do love to knit. And so the question is, how do you find your life's purpose? And this is something that people ask me Oh, all the time. We actually have a whole program on it, probably somewhere on our website, I have no idea, uh, on how to find your life's purpose. It's one of the things we teach our spiritual practitioners it, how to assist their clients in finding their life's purpose. And it's really all about one thing. Your life's purpose is about one thing and one thing only. And I will tell you what that thing is later. So first, let's talk a little bit about what your life's purpose isn't. Your life's purpose isn't your job. Your life's purpose isn't your role. Your life's purpose isn't what you do. Your life's purpose isn't small. Your life's purpose is likely to be very abstract. Something that you could embody in any different role or job. So one of the things so um, oh, where to start where to start there's so much we can talk about so 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 your life so your job your business if you run a business your work if you're in work you're choosing not to go out to work outside of the home if that's what you choose to do might all be how you're expressing your life's purpose so your life's purpose is very abstract. So what do I, so I'm going to use me as an example. So my life's purpose is I am, so I am, and it has, there's two ways I use this. So it's, it's a, it's a two word thing. So the first is I am, I am the divine liberator. And so that's who I am. And my purpose is to liberate divinity. So what that means is that what I do with my clients, with my students, with everyone who I meet, <laughs> like covertly or overtly, subtly or, I don't know, obviously, I assist people to realize that they are divine. My purpose is to help others remember that they are divine, to reconnect, to reaccess the divinity within them. That's why I say I am the divine liberator. So I assist someone to liberate the divinity, the divine within themselves. And I deliberate. So I, what's what I do? I am the divine liberator. And what I do is I liberate divinity. So that's why those two words flip back and forth. We actually have a process where we take people through where we find the group of words that most express who and people most resonate with who they are. Oh, Caroline said hello. Hello, Caroline. Lovely to see you here. Oh, if you have any questions, whether you're listening to it live or on the replay, pop them in the chatty, chitty chat thing and I will either answer them now if I'm on live or I'll come back later and do a typey thing. I am keeping very well, very well, and so is my fish. I will show you my fish, there's my fish. And my, my snail is at the bottom, the little orange thing just by my finger, that's my snail. He's called Bumper, the snail is Bumper. My fish is Kiting Chicky Bangkok, which is a good name for a fish, I think. Okay, back to life's purpose. So, one of the things people, I think, get confused with when it comes to knowing what their life's purpose is. So one of the common questions is, people have, oh, I'm so confused. I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. So the first question, the first thing they kind of, that's not helping is, what am I supposed to be doing? Because your life's purpose isn't, like, the way they're thinking about it is often the job they do. So, for example, I love fish and chips, very partial to a bit of fish and chips, live down here in Cornwall, a lot of fish and chips going. I think there's eight fish and chip shops in my local town. <laughs> They're just everywhere. Uh, second popular, most popular food next to pasties, I should think. I don't know, and green teas. Don't love fish and chips, but I know that my 
purpose, probably, you know, like I don't really have any big desire to work in a fish and chip shop. Happy to go there, buy the chips, not work there. But if I did, I could still be the divine liberator in a chip shop. I, I don't know quite how I do that, but I would find a way. Like I used to be a lecturer, a senior lecturer in automotive engineering. I could have found a way to express my life's purpose in that job, in that role. I'm also a mum, and I do express that purpose in that role. So let's take another purpose. So I have um, somebody else who uh, is on my team, an amazing woman. So her purpose, it's all around her. She is the light. So her purpose is being the light and assisting others to find the light within themselves. So it's, it's all about love. It's all about connection. And she says, I can do that lying on my sofa watching the telly because I'm doing it to my, doing it for myself. So that's the other thing. Your life's purpose is something that you do for others and yourself. Um, now, one of the reasons I think people get confused with their life's purpose is not that they so they think it's, you know, so the first is they think it's a job. Oh, what am I supposed to be? It's like their career. And it's not. It's who they are and how they want to express themselves in this incarnation, in this lifetime. So the first, my first invitation for you is to think bigger. Think way bigger than your job or your role. And I'll come back to the one thing, the key thing that I mentioned in the beginning. I'll come back to that. The other thing I think people find is they, I, this is my take on it. Whenever I've spoken to somebody and, you know, we've been talking about purpose and, and I say, well, you know, well, like, what, what, what do you, what, what do you love to do? Like, what brings you joy? And they'll tell me and they'll go, but, you know, I'm really confused because, you know, I, I've been trained in this. And so I'm obviously I'm supposed to do this. And, the, the thing is, I think I think everyone deep down or even superficially, like, you know what your purpose is. You know what makes you happy. You know it, it's something you, you already do. It's something you find easy. It's something that if you didn't think you had to do a whole bunch of other stuff, you would just find yourself doing all the time. You just do it. You want to do it. You yearn to do it. You can't help but do it and live it and express it. But here's the thing where people get confused is most people know what their purpose is, but they don't believe they can live it. They don't believe that they can do it. And so they get confused. It's like, uh, I want to be, you know, I want to do that. That's what brings me joy. But I don't believe I can do that or it's not OK in my culture or my society or in my family or whatever. And so so what they do is they try and go, OK, so. I will do that because that's the sensible thing and I'll try and I'll make myself want to do that. And then they wonder why they don't want to do this thing that they're trying to make themselves want to do. So, so do you get what I'm saying here? <laughs> it's not. So the thing is, most people know what their purpose is, but they don't think they can do it. So then they try and make themselves want to do something that they think they can do. Or they try and think of all the things they can do and pick one of those, oh, I can do that, and I can do that, and I can do that, and I can do that. So one of these is going to be my purpose, right? Well, not necessarily, right? Not necessarily. Your per and, and it's and so there's this kind of two aspects of this. There's your purpose, who you are, what you want to bring, you know, the divine liberator, the light. And then there's the vehicle through which you express your purpose. And you're, that vehicle, like, so for example, we run, you know, I run Psychademy, my business Psychademy. Every product we do has liberating divinity in there. It has an aspect of that. So all of our products, all of our programs, all of our courses, everything we do, every video we produce, I try and expand people's minds, raise their consciousness, get them to realize you you don't, like, you are divine. You've just forgotten it. And everything I do is about helping people to remember that. And I've got a whole bunch of clever, really brilliant spiritual technologies that help people remember that they are divine and forget and remember how to forget that they're not. I know, try and work that one out. But what many people do is they think of all the things they can do and then they think, this is what I have to choose from. This tiny little group, of th I could do this, 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 or this, and I've got to choose from this, even though my purpose is over there. And I won't really want to do that, but look, it's got to be in here. Right, I've got to find it in here somewhere. It's got to be in here somewhere. I've got to pick over it and try and find it. When actually it's over there. It's the thing that you yearn to do. That's what your purpose is. So do you want to know what the key is? The one key to your finding your purpose, and it is joy. 
It's joy because when you are expressing your purpose, you will feel joy. Now, I'm not talking about relaxation, comfort. You know, it's like, I like watching a bit of Netflix. I don't presume for a moment that watching Netflix is my life's purpose. <laughs> and, you know, or maybe that, you know, maybe I'm just, you know, in some way, uh, you know, that's part of my relaxation, my chill time, right? And so it's it's what brings you deep profound joy it's you know there's this whole a lot of um uh sort of uh things out there products programs technology that will help you get into the zone or into flow or a flow state or peak state that peak state and what people try and do is they try and get into that peak state and they make it about that thing okay i've got to be in this peak state and then do this thing here this thing here that I don't really want to do, but I'm going to try and get into that peak state. And I'm going to try and stay in this peak state where I do this thing I don't really want to do. Now, you can do that. You absolutely can do that. But what if you lived your life from joy? Because when you're living your purpose, you are in that peak state. You know, I'm at the moment I'm writing a new book all about spiritual leadership, and you'll hear about that soon. And I, I, I'm going to be right. I will have written this book probably in, I don't know, 10 days. Maybe, I don't know, maybe longer. I'm just guessing. I'm, I, I reckon I'll have finished, she looks at the calendar, probably by Monday or Tuesday next week, I think. Let's say the end of next week, right? So let's say it's going to take me two weeks to write this book. It's not a long book, right? <laughs> but it's a powerful book and it's an important book. And the thing is, at no point during the writing process do I feel I'm having to force myself. I don't feel I have to write it. I feel I have to write it because it's a message I want to get out. And I and writing is the, the vehicle for me expressing this part of my purpose. Writing it brings me joy. Oh, Caroline says it's well explained. Thank you. Thank you. That is one of my intentions. That's one of the ways I attempt and aim to express my purpose through bringing clarity of communication and understanding. So here's my invitation. Rather than looking at all the things you can do and try and pick your purpose from that, follow the joy, the deep, profound joy. And if that means you need to take some time to just not do anything or not struggle and strive to search for it, then do that. If that means that you might want to just experiment with some stuff, you know, take up a new hobby, try some new things to expand what you could do, go on some different courses, read some different sorts of books. And if you don't find them inspiring, interesting or exciting, just drop them, drop it and do something else that does bring you deep, profound joy. So hope you enjoyed that. I got pretty excited and passionate about that. <laughs> I just, it, I get so frustrated with the limitations that people put on how on their brilliance. I'm not frustrated with the people, but the limitations they put on their brilliance. So like you are so much more brilliant and so much more capable and so much more expansive than you may ever be realizing and thinking right now. I see the divinity in you. And I want you to see it in yourself. And I want you to express that through your purpose, joyfully, passionately, so that you're doing something that brings you joy. Because here's the thing, when you're doing something that brings you joy, other people will want to be around you. And those of you who are working in and running spiritual businesses and coaching businesses, and a lot of, a lot of my followers are doing that kind of thing. If you're struggling to find clients, this because somewhere in there, you're doing what you think you can do rather than what brings you joy. And when you find the joy, clients will just magnetize to you because that's you embodying your purpose. And that's the way to be a spiritual leader. One of the ways to be a spiritual leader is to be the expression of your divine purpose in your physical body. I will talk more about that maybe in another Facebook, Facebook Live. So, so hope you enjoyed that. Follow the joy, try new things, expand your thinking be the divinity that you are express the divine that is within you and share that with everyone be that spiritual leader that the world is calling for you to be right now so oh any questions ah oh, lorraine do you ever struggle to edit your book um not really i so i, I read my book i uh so I, I write my book and then i read through it again to do a first draft edit but i am i am very dyslexic so like in a good way <laughs> I think it's good to be dyslexic. So I actually just get someone else to edit it for me. And and, and like most authors will always have an edit editor. 
So I, I, we have several phases of editing. We've got the, does the whole book make sense and is it in the right order? And then we've got that Lisa mad Lisa typos and spelling mistakes where somebody will come back to me, what were you actually trying to say here? Because like this is just a mangled sentence and uh, sometimes, you know, just copy paste nonsense. But um, yeah, so I don't find that that's a struggle. I don't find it's a struggle because I, I get somebody else to do the bits that I'm not great at because that's not my purpose, right? That's so I you so yeah, I just get support. That's that's why we're not alone on the world. You see, that's why there are other people in the world. Other people are here to help us. So there. So if there are any other questions, happy to answer them now or later on. Oh, Caroline says I'm an angel. Thank you. Well, you're an angel too. Because if aren't we all angels? We're all angels on earth. Uh, Lorraine says thank you. You're very welcome. You're very welcome. So any other questions, pop them in the chitty chat thing. I will answer them later. If you liked this video, click the likey thing. If you loved it, click the lovey, lovey thing or the luggy thing. I don't know. It's a new word I invented. If it's part of being dyslexic. Um, if you think this is an important video that other people would benefit from knowing, do the little sharey thing. Share it around or tag someone in it to see if, uh, you know, um, see if they're interested in it. Do you know anyone who's struggling to find their life's purpose? Share it with them. Till next time, lots and lots of love. Bye, everyone. Bye.